Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Today I'm gonna to show you a little project that can let you have lights and bilge pumps and everything in your dinghy. Totally charge free, takes care of itself for like a hundred bucks. About three, four years ago, I bought this dinghy and I put an electrical system in it that's based on a little cheap solar panel and I wanted to have a, a, a battery that could charge up off the solar panel and run mostly the bilge pump because I hate getting up in the morning after a big rainstorm and bailing before I can use the dinghy. Also, you know, I've been places where there's so much rain it actually like sinks the dinghy in like four hours so you just have to keep bailing or pull it out of the water. So this is a really great thing to have. While I was at it, I put in lights in the dinghy. So it has, I hit a switch. We're all lit up, red, green, and white, and legal and everything. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. Normally when you do a project like this, the little solar panels, not too expensive. This is a 10 watt panel, plenty. Little lead acid battery, AGM, flip it all directions, not terribly expensive. Bilge pump, well, they cost what bilge pumps cost, but you know, you need the bilge pump if you want it. Again, light's not a big deal, switch. But the charge controller, trying to find a halfway decent charge controller that doesn't cost 50 bucks, you know, that's a thing. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in a different way. And um, it works out pretty good. Okay, so you might be asking, why is this a brand new battery? Well, when I did it before, I put the battery in in this orientation with the negative pull down lying sideways. And you'll see how I do this in there with some foam. <laughs> I stupidly didn't put a drain in, filled up with water, corroded away this terminal. Otherwise, every bit of the circuitry works great. So I got a new battery uh, and I'm gonna put this in vertically this time and I put a drain hole in it. As for all of our projects, we're gonna put all the parts in our Amazon store. So just go down to the description, go to our Amazon store. I think the little store is called Dinghy Hacks and uh, you'll find an example of all kinds of stuff that'll work for this project. Let's dig in. So I cut a hole in the foam here and uh, to store the battery and the other components. I'm gonna put the new battery in. Um, I just modified the foam, as I mentioned, and added a drainage down into the bottom that goes into the main. So I don't know how the water got in there. Could have been condensation over the years, or it could have been, uh, I know it all failed when we left the boat for seven months and this thing filled up with water pretty good. Um, the drain hole got plugged up. So anyway, I'll put that in. Now this circuit out here, you can't see it. We're gonna go inside, I'm gonna draw it all out and make you another one. So just trust me, this works, but I'll give you the overview of it here. So I'm gonna hook her up now. Let's put the battery in. Where's the other one? <laughs> right there. Okay, let me grab my meter. Okay, so I'll take the battery off again first quickly. So I got my meter and just to check the battery, it is at 12.7 volts. And then I'm gonna hook it up to the system and I get, well, 12.77 volts. So it's charging. Uh, it's not charging great because like I'm in front of the solar panel. There we go. 12.82, 12.83, it's going up. So that battery is charging. Uh, just a little how I use it. I added this waterproof switch here. It has three positions. Middle is just off, maintenance or whatever. Down is where I normally leave it, and that's where the automatic bilge pump is turned on. I'm gonna just hit this by hand. So you probably can hear that. And uh, the up position turns on the lights. Uh, the downside of that is I can't have the bilge pump and the lights on at the same time, but you don't really need the bilge pump when you're here. So uh, that's how we use it. Pretty simple. Now, if you didn't have an aluminum with seats and foam to put all the parts in, what I'd recommend is one of two things. Either put all of this in a box of some kind and uh, 
either connect it to your transom of your inflatable if that's what you've got or if you guys use the seat you know across hook it underneath that seat and that'd be a good place to get it out of the way the solar panel probably the best thing would be up on the bow section and you could even get a small flexible up there i imagine i'll leave that up to your ingenuity let's go inside now and uh, go over the circuit and learn how to build one of these okay we're inside where we could talk about the circuit let's talk about the components um i'd recommend an agm battery they're lead and you can flip them around and they don't need any maintenance and you basically can forget about it uh, you're going to need uh, two diodes. It's really pretty open on what you use for a diode. But get something that's rated for like 3 amps. There'll be a link, you know, below. I'll find you one. You'll need one of these. This is called a buck converter. Uh, if you watch my video on how to power a laptop off 12 volts, that was all about a boost converter. Same family. It's in the family of switching power supplies. Watch out. These things are expensive. Um... I went really high end on this one because it has a lot of sealed components. This is $1.90. Um, I saw them for 70 cents, uh, but uh, you know, the difference, it wasn't worth it. And I thought this was more waterproof. Here's the switch I'm using. Uh, any switch would do. If you want to do all the things I'm doing, you need a single pull, double throw at least. Uh, I like these little rubber boots for most applications that can be wet on this side but are dry on this side, which is a lot of what a boat is. But for this application, I paid the money for a real waterproof switch, like Dunk in the Ocean waterproof. Uh, they cost quite a bit more, but this is a really tough environment. You don't want to be changing switches all the time. You'll need a bilge pump. Um, I'm not talking about any particular brand, but... This one's available on eBay and all over the place. It's not this so much that matters. It's that it has a uh, float switch right in it. You can kind of access the float switch manually here. And uh, that just puts it all in one case. And for this application, it's particularly uh, nice to have this kind of a bilge pump. Um, I've been using these lights to fair effect. Uh, these string lights, you can see them all over everywhere. They come in different colors. So I buy a string of red, a string of green, and a string of white. Uh, the, the history of these, they were kind of set up to go behind liquid crystal display screens to illuminate them. And then people started using them for everything. So they've got colored ones and all kinds of stuff now. You don't need to use the whole roll. That would be overkill. And in fact, where they've soldered it on, I tend not to use that. If you look at them, you can cut them, uh, these little cut lines, and you scrape back the waterproofing and you can solder right on to the copper that's available. They're pretty waterproof. They're not great. Um, so you cut it off and then I would silicone the hell out of it when I put it back in. But anyway, the ones that are, say, waterproof have this rubbery waterproof coating over them. And I haven't found anything better that's cheap and... Um, they get beat up a lot when you run into things, so I, I want something that I can just replace. I don't want to try to do it with some kind of a proper component. And then finally, the solar panel. Well, I don't have a little solar panel here, but uh, I just looked on uh, Amazon and they still have uh, 10 watt panels, which is what I use. And that turned out to be way more power than I need. Five watt panel would be fine. I thought of another place to place one. Um, if I didn't have a hard dinghy with a nice seat that I didn't use very much, I think I would place the uh, solar panel on top of the motor. I think it'd be a great place. And a five watt panel goes there quite nicely. So five or 10 watts, um, the hard panels are tougher and they will last longer and just like in every application. But if there's ever application for a flexible one, that might be like up on the bow of an inflatable dinghy. I'm sure you could just strap one on there, glue it down, something like that. And it would work pretty well. I've also found that there are now some solar panels that have voltage regulators in them for a decent price. So if you go that way, you get to skip some of these components. Let's draw it out now. So our solar panel what do they look like you know solar panel but in short we want one that puts out well whatever this is rated for this guy goes up to 40 volts so damn near any panel that you could use you could ever find could be used um, the minimum voltage 
again, you're not going to find it uh, below this, but it would have to be about 14 volts. These things are usually 18 to 20. So let's drop our little uh, buck converter into here. Uh, the negative goes to the negative, the positive goes to the positive. Now uh, you would grab a diode because these things let power go back through them and the solar panel will burn a little bit of power at night. So you just want this to be a one-way thing. So you grab a diode and you put the diode in. Uh, diodes have a little stripe around one side. They always do. Um, the power normally wants to go in the direction of the arrow and the symbol, which is from positive to negative. So we'd place that in here. If we put it on the positive side with the symbol looking like that and coming out of here. Now from here, we'll do a little split. We'll put a fuse in because fuses are always nice and hook it to the positive side of the battery. Okay, from here you would go up to your switch. Go to the common of your switch and then real simple for the LEDs, put all your LEDs in parallel and uh, they're rigged up so that uh, the symbol would be this way. And they would come back to the battery. You would want to run this to the bilge pump. Now bilge pumps of this type have three wires. Ground goes to ground, pretty obvious. And there's usually two wires that are similar. Uh, one's usually tagged in this case, but you can check real easy just by hooking it to a battery and playing with the switch. One of them uses the switch, so it's normally off unless there's water in the boat. And then the other one is just always on. So you grab the one that is um, only on when the bilge pump is needing. And let's just put that on our drawing here. So you run a wire to the positive of that, and then from the negative again, back to the battery. Anyway, that's all there is to it. If you happen to find a solar panel that already had a, a charge controller built into it, you could basically throw away everything from here up. Just put the panel right up to this point. Now, once we have this all wired up, there's one more thing to do. We need to calibrate this. The heart of what this little guy does is he takes higher voltages and brings them down to lower voltage. And he does it in a very good way. Uh, with a coil. So if there's low amp high voltage, it'll actually put out high amp low voltage Just like an MPPT charge controller, but not quite as smart it doesn't have the stages So what you want to do is adjust its output voltage so that it's somewhere safe for a battery in this application We'll have Sun 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 for days on end Then we have a little rain and the pump has to run for a relatively small amount of time or we turn on the lights, but LED lights don't use much, and you know, how often do we really have them on? So if it takes us a long time to charge the battery, that's just fine. So we'll set this guy for a good reasonable low voltage for a lead battery. I usually set it for about 13.5, and you can just kind of keep a lead battery at 13.5 for years, you know. It's not perfect, but it, it works fine. So to do that, it's important to disconnect the battery lead um, put your meter on, because uh, I don't have a meter handy, but we all know what a multimeter looks like. Hook the meter on to the positive and the negative, and then put a little screwdriver right here while you're in the sun. Won't work unless you're in the sun. And you can adjust this knob to adjust the voltage. If you screw it in, the voltage goes up in this particular model, and you screw it out, it goes down. You have to go quite a bit. It's like 25 turns lock to lock. Um, one little piece of advice, if you go up in voltage, it goes up pretty fast. If you try to go down in voltage, it's like it's not working. That's because this is a capacitor and it holds power for a while. So if you go down in voltage, you know, do a few turns and just let it sit for a while. And you'll see your meter come down and when it mellows out, go back up and get it dialed right in where you want it. Then you hook it back to the battery. If you did check the voltage, you would find the voltage goes right down because it goes to the voltage of the battery but it's slowly charging and eventually when the battery is fully charged you'll see that 13 and a half volts or whatever number you choose if you choose a higher number the battery will charge faster but it's a little tougher on the battery if you charge a lower number you know 13.3 would be like perfect float but it might take literally days to take a charge now let's go back to the dinghy well i'm going to button this up and screw it back down and not mess with it for many more years so I hope you like the video. Give us the thumbs up, you know, subscribe. 
Check to see if you're subscribed. I found out from a lot of people, YouTube has been dumping people's subscriptions. So just check again if you would. Uh, we're getting close to 75,000 subscribers. It's kind of exciting. I'd like to have a few more. We have a whole electrical series. This is part of it, and it'll teach you a lot about electricity. Anyway, bye from Tempter.